Power. Identity is everything. I think a lot of people in Ireland are having a bit of an identity crisis. You guys, I assume, have Irish passports? Yeah. Do any of you have British passports? See, mm. mod. <laughs> <laughs> so this is it. Yeah. The old divisions that were there have resurfaced. And we're not talking about suicide. We're not talking about homelessness. What we're talking about is Brexit. Right here is UK. So we're in the UK? Yeah. Uh, this is Ireland. Wait, so just now we crossed back? Or where are we? Now you're back. <laughs> I literally right now do not know which country I'm in. Brexit, the whole United Kingdom, should be leaving the European Union. Yeah, I couldn't care less about Dublin. Me, it's not my country. It's not an Irish bone in my body. Get baptized again. Two and I am Jay O'Caroline. <laughs> From the top. <laughs> We are right at the border between Ireland and the United Kingdom. We're waiting for a guy named George Mills who uh, runs a small trucking company with his father. They move all sorts of goods across this border in both directions every day. How are you? Not too bad, thank God. Good. So where is the border in relation to where we are right now? Just well, you can see where it changes from 60 mile an hour to 100 kilometers per hour and the different color of lines on the road. That's us, we're in Northern Ireland now. And, well, we're in Southern Ireland now. <laughs> so we, yeah, you just that's, us, that's the border now. That used to be the old customs post or one of there in the, in the south. This here? Yeah. Obviously there's no customs post. No, there not now. anymore, thank God. At the minute anyway. Ireland is a place where borders come in many forms. This international boundary is only one of them. The island is split between two sovereign nations, the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, which is part of the United Kingdom. And yet, George Mills crosses the border as if it weren't there. So how often do you do this, what, what we just did, crossing well, the border? today I've crossed the border four times already today. Well, I left this morning came through this border, drove down through Northern Ireland to County Cavan, where I loaded a load of cement. And then I went back over the border, there to load a load of this Colombian coal. It wasn't always this way. Not long ago, this border was heavily militarized and violently contested. For three decades, Irish Republicans waged an armed campaign to kick the British out of the North and unite it with the rest of the Ireland. That conflict ended in 1998, with an agreement that while the North would stay in the UK, the border would stay open. That was possible because both countries used to be in the European Union, which allows free movement across borders. But then Brexit happened. That left Ireland divided between one country that still belongs to the EU and one that doesn't. But to avoid a return to violence, instead of putting checkpoints on the actual international boundary, the border was moved to the Irish Sea between Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Here in the port of Belfast, there are ships constantly moving back and forth, bringing all sorts of goods. If those goods need to be stopped, then essentially what you're doing is you're putting a border inside of a single sovereign nation state, inside the nation of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. That's something that also has massive political implications for people who live here in Northern Ireland, but consider themselves British and believe that the integrity of the nation of the United Kingdom is something worth fighting and dying for. Those people are known as Unionists or Loyalists. They fought the Nationalists and Republicans during the Troubles. And while the violence has mostly died down, the conflict itself remains. This is a heavily loyalist housing estate in a um, little town east of Belfast. And there's big, aggressive loyalist murals all over the place. Some, like this one right here, are brand new and actually are a direct response to efforts to put a border on the Irish Sea. So we're about to talk to someone who believes very strongly that that's an unacceptable hey. scenario. How you doing? Hey, I'm nice good. To meet you. How you are too. You? I'm right. fine. How are you? Yeah, all fine. Jamie Bryson is a hardline loyalist. 
He's been accused in the press of having ties to loyalist paramilitaries, which he denies. But he'll be the first to tell you that he agrees with them on everything except their tactics. It's about nationality and we're part of the United Kingdom and we want to remain part of the United Kingdom. What other sovereign country in the world has border checks within their own country? It's, it's wholly illogical. We're part of the United Kingdom and it would impose an economic border and it would, it would essentially carve Northern Ireland off into, into what I'd termed a, an economic United Ireland. We would be orientated towards Dublin rather than London. I couldn't care less about Dublin. Dublin has nothing to do with me. It's not my country. Uh, and I most certainly don't want to be in an economic union with the Irish Republic. If there was someone who didn't know anything about you and they met you on the street and they asked you, what nationality are you, what would you say? Well, I'm British. Would you ever consider yourself Irish? Oh, absolutely not. No, I'm, I'm not Irish. There's not, there's not an Irish bone in my body. You know, I, I, I'm British. I'm born in the United Kingdom uh, in Northern Ireland, uh, and I'm British, so there's absolutely nothing Irish about me. Everywhere you look, you see signs of the divide. British and Protestant here, Irish and Catholic there. Still, after 22 years of peacetime, those identities have evolved. If you go to the right pub in Catholic West Belfast, you'll catch a glimpse of the present and future of Irishness. Cheers. Slanja. Welcome. This is Mika. What you're hearing is a mix of English and Irish. These guys are staunch nationalists. They use Republican slogans, and they mean them. But it's also all a little bit of a joke. Starting with the name Nika, which ridicules the paramilitary practice of punishing delinquents by shooting them in the knee. I came to the point where if you were shot, if, if you got a punishment beaten or a kneecapping, you were like the top scumbag type of thing. So it became like a badge of honor. Why do you wear the balaclava? Uh, I used to work in a school. I was te <laughs> teaching, and then I obviously I had to cover the cover the face just to keep me on in the midi. Didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. It was the worst kept secret. <laughs> <laughs> the letter. Isn't you have the letter there? So this is a letter I got from the school. It was kind of investigation. That was an investigation yeah. after they wanted to find out who was the mask member, and they had suspicions that it might have been me, which was completely wrong. It's not even true. So. I am, writing, letter anyway. I am writing in relation to serious concerns which have been raised in relation to your alleged membership of a musical group known as Kneecap. In one video, a mask member appears to snort a white substance. In another video available online, a mask member indecently exposes his buttocks, <laughs> mooning the crowd with the words Brits and out written on either buttock. In one <laughs> extract, the mask member uses crutches as gun signals towards the crowd. And there's like 12 pages of this shit. There's no proof. There's no proof. Wait, so is, the, is this how you got fired? Yeah. Is that, that, that letter is how you got fired? Yeah, it was like, if you ever watch like a pirate film, where they put you out on the, the walkway and you have to have a choice of either jumping or being pushed. I just did a big fucking backflip, landed, tens all around. <laughs> landed on your feet too? Landed on my feet. That's fucking gold. We asked the guys in kneecap to show us around West Belfast. They took it one step further. We're now following them to uh, basically an isolated place in the woods outside the city where one of them was christened as a child. It's a, an old clandestine Catholic church in the woods. It's called the Mass Rock, dating back to when it was illegal to practice Catholicism in Northern Ireland. Follow us. Oh. You want him or something? Have you regretted asking us yet? Nope, not yet. You'll get there, don't worry. <laughs> The year after I was born, I was christened here, and I uh, haven't been here since, so. Why would your parents christen you in a rock in the woods? Uh, they're super hipsters, and uh, <laughs> they just wanted to be different. No, I think they, just, they love the Ra and the Irish language. Uh huh. The Ra, by the way, is the IRA. So he was raised with Irish, like, he was, he had it in the house. He's one of the elites. Dragged up through Irish. He was dragged like your parents, up through Irish. You, you spoke, your parents spoke Irish when yeah, you were growing Yeah, yeah, constantly. It is the oldest written language in Europe that's still spoken today. Why does it matter so much to you guys, the language? I mean, identity is everything. I think a lot of people in Ireland, particularly, up, up the, nor the north side of it anyway, are 
having a bit of an identity crisis. So once you speak the language, you, you know who you are as a person, and then knowing who you are as a person comes the confidence to do whatever the fuck you want. Do you know what I mean? Right. Do you know how far we are from where we're going? Having from the mass rock? Have having a fucking clue. Why well, are we boring you already? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm just... <laughs> <It's> getting tired. Canadians on the road. That's it. Yeah. I'm mocking up Disney, Higgling, fucking Fanak, Mickey, Daniel, a chapter of Allah, be a car, Carlsberg, August, Jen, and Tonic, Russian, and Burger Moy, Lumps, and Mock, Malamore, Ran. We've been walking around for about an hour. How do we get across? And nobody knows exactly where this place is. He could have made this whole story up for you. <laughs> I don't see no proof. <laughs> what do you think? I have no Neither do fucking I. clue. You Americans must be, feel proper lost now. Not a McDonald's in sight. All right, well, we've got a river. So, this is it. Yeah! Oh, no shit. He's looking bad, too. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, oh, Jesus, the fucking state of the place. This is where the younger priests come to drink. Catholics were good at finding the hiding spaces, you mean? Yeah, For yeah. mass. Practice. Because there was a, a load of Irish speaking Fenians going into a, deep into the forest in 19, whatever, 94 it was, um, it was very suspicious back in them days for the English. So the English followed us in a helicopter the whole time, and the helicopter, helicopter hovered over the Christen the whole time. So that's how I came into life, uh, being stalked by the British. Hopefully that's the way you go out as well. That's the way I go out, getting chased by a British helicopter. So I think some people would look at you guys, you wearing the balaclava. People would look at this and they would assume, all right, these kids are like young IRA sympathizers. Is that true? Well, all we know is the Irish nationalists that we know and the Republicans that we know are all the bin men and the teachers in our schools and, and bar men. These people who are just, Poor working class people want to join a cause, and that's all we see. We can't look back at that time and question the, 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 the options they chose, like going towards violence, whatever. That was a different time. But we wouldn't, I wouldn't advocate any violence these days, I don't think. I don't think it's going to get us anywhere. I think there's other options now, and that's, that's why music and culture and language are so important to these people. Northern Ireland is a place where you can choose whether to be an Irish citizen or a British citizen. Yeah. yeah. Or both. Yeah. You, you make that decision. Mm -hmm. And you guys, I assume have Irish passports. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do any of you have British passports? <laughs> Behave. Too much. <laughs> it's only a piece of paper at the end of the day too, like, you know what I mean? If I had a British passport now, it doesn't make me any less Irish. But the thing, yeah, I think to have the British passport is to legitimise, essentially, the 800 years of colonialism here. It's an illegitimate state, you know? If someone went into your house and took over your kitchen and just said, no, this is my kitchen now, and you go, what the fuck, I was just making a pizza? And then you go, well, I don't care, this is my kitchen, I'm calling it Northern Kitchen. But, if, but with Brexit, like, that was the tipping point, I think, anyway, towards the United Ireland, in my opinion, was the fact that you have now Protestants in the North voting to stay in the European Union. But so you guys think that this could all lead to a situation where people in the North, even people who care on some level about their British identity or whatever, that people who live in the North are going to want to remain in the EU and that they might decide, like, Screw it. I would rather be a part of a United Ireland than a part of this mm. sort of... And they can still be British or Polish or Japanese or whatever they want to be in an Ireland. You know what I mean? They'll still have their identities. They'll not be taken away from anybody, any identity. This is the Schenkel. It's a Protestant neighborhood in Belfast, and it's notorious as a sort of hotbed of unionist or loyalist uh, belief, identity, and, and activity. This entire neighborhood, this main drag of this neighborhood, is decorated with dozens and dozens and dozens of union jacks of British flags, which is not actually something you normally see anywhere else in the United Kingdom. The Schenkel is separated from the next neighborhood over, the predominantly Catholic Falls Road, by a different kind of border a wall known as a peace line. The government built peace lines all over Belfast during the Troubles to prevent sectarian violence. But they didn't go down with the peace process. In fact, many, including this one, only got taller. James Scott lives three blocks on the Schenkel side of the peace line. What's that? He'll keep me right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's your, he's your PR guy. He's yeah. your minder. Yeah. <laughs> so this is it. Yeah. Those who potentially were involved in up conflict. No, who's what, what, what was that? What was that? Up the RA. Yeah. Which is up the RA. The RA, yeah. Yeah. So that we just had a little Republican drive-by, basically. All right. 
Is that normal here? It happens all the time. Um, <laughs> you just kind of <laughs> laugh and kind yeah. of, yeah, right, up, whatever. What I was saying was that you have two very deprived communities, you know, divided by a wall, who aren't allowed to integrate. You know, aren't allowed to integrate? No, they're not allowed to integrate because they have non-integrated schools, we have non-integrated workplaces. Like, m like my son, he grew up with this wall, and this wall becomes part of his identity because it's always been there. What about you? How do yeah. you identify? I'm 42, um, and that's still m my debate. I see myself as British Irish, you know, but you're not allowed to be British Irish here. Has Brexit made things better or worse? I think it's made it worse um, because what's happened is that th the old divisions that were there have resurfaced um, and people have then went back into their communities and entrenched in their communities. I think people are clinging on to it with fear. We have more in common with probably the people here than we have in somebody in the Malone Road or living in Lisburn. We have more in common. The Malone Road and Lisburn are wealthy parts of Belfast. In contrast, the Schenkel and the Falls, the neighborhoods on either side of this peace line, are solidly working class. They share many of the same problems, including substance abuse stemming from conflict-related trauma. From the peace process from 1998 till modern day, there's been more deaths from suicide than there was during the whole 30-year war. So a lot of people say, is the war over, really? Do you know what I mean? It just created a vacuum of all these kids running about with nothing to fucking do, no jobs, and depressed because fucking family members are in jail or family members are dead or whatever. It leaves this vacuum, so the war never ended during the peace process in 1998. It's not like, oh, that's the war, back to normal, guys. At the end of the day, we have more interest in people in the Shankill gaining from United Ireland than someone from Malone Road because the people in the Shankill, if we gain and they gain, there's two working class communities side by side. The government up north, if it stays with the sort of identity politics that it's been going with the whale about, oh, you're this and you're that, you're green, and you're orange or whatever, then we'll never get anywhere, essentially. It's the same at anywhere. It's uniting the working class. There's a lot more of us than there is at ends. And if we have, if all the working class are united together, then everyone's going to benefit. And then we'll, we'll throw all we'll, the middle class out. Yeah, we'll get, and then we'll hang all the upper class at the city hall. And then I'm fucked. <laughs> Root baptized again. Reliving his childhood. Bastion, who in I am Jay, Nisha, Mowgli, Bap, O'Caroline. <laughs> From the top. We're on a mad one. Get your brain side. Get your brain side. Get your brain side. We're on a mad one. Ireland has been stuck for decades in the conflict between two identities. But peacetime has seen the arrival of entirely new ones. For most of its history, the island sent emigrants elsewhere. But in the last couple of decades, it's drawn more and more immigrants from other parts of the world. We're about to meet a guy who is from Nigeria and has been living here for a few years. His name is Stanley King. Yeah, how you doing? I'm bad. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So we just do the elbow we can do the, shake? We can do the elbow yeah. bump. That's right. Stanley lives in Cavan, a border town in the Irish Republic. The main road north crosses the border with Northern Ireland four times in the span of about six miles. After Brexit, while everyone agonized over whether there would be a return to a hard border, they mostly neglected the people for whom the border is already real, even if it's invisible. Here? Yeah. Okay. There's no barriers, there's no sign. If you don't kind of pay attention, you never see. Even before Brexit, most immigrants from outside the EU already needed a visa to cross the line. People still travel. People chance it and still go. Like Aniskali, you know, lots of Southerners, uh, migrants, they go into Aniskali to do their shopping because it's very cheap. Are you are you technically allowed to do that? You're not allowed to do that. You must have a visa to get to go in. Is it just a technicality? Like, has anybody ever gotten in trouble for that? Well, yeah, people have gotten into trouble. People have been caught and deported to London and from London straight back home. So people have been deported yeah, for, people for, have been. for crossing this border? For crossing this border. The people, risk is still the, there. The risk is there. You know, you know, you know the risk. You, know, you, got, you just chance it. Now, can you see anything? Yeah, I, I noticed Right here that. is UK. 
So we're in the UK. Yeah. I, I noticed that the lines on the side yeah. of the road went from yellow Very to good. white. Very good. Yeah. Now you notice that. This, this, the, this petrol station takes pounds, not euros. Yeah, there you go. I used to buy my fireworks over there because it's illegal in, in Ireland, so I can just drive there. Pick it up. <laughs> fireworks? <laughs> uh, this is Ireland. Wait. Yeah. Did we cross back? We crossed back. This is Ireland. We're going to cross back in again. We're going to go in again. Wait, so we just now we, we crossed we just, back? We just, we're going to be back into UK, uh, just about 300 meters away. So now we're back in the Republic of Ireland? Yeah. Now we're back in UK. Now we're back in the UK? Look at the sign. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> I literally right now do not know which country I'm in. Where? No, you don't know, but I know. But, so, but I, I'm saying that authentically, <laughs> I genuinely don't know no, which country we're in. Exactly. So where, where, where are we? Now you're back. <laughs> but, okay, I'm sorry. Where are we and how many times have we crossed? You've just crossed it several times. I told you, you don't even know when you cross it. You've been out and in, out and in, out and in several times. So, okay. Back, we're back in the Republic. We're back in the but we we're back in the republic. You can see yeah, the hundred kilometers. kilometers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're right. back in the republic. Most borders are at least a little bit absurd, but this one is one of the most absurd of all. For all the blood that's been spilled over this line in all its different versions, the division that it marks, not just between countries but between people, seems outdated and abstract. So for someone like you who is from somewhere very far away, something like this, I imagine that it's all kind of a little bit ridiculous. This, of course, for me, it's, um, it's just a very funny... It, when you tell people, people, most people don't understand. You know, I, I, it took me so many years for me to get around it. Yeah, it's really wild. I mean, it's just, it's the same... It's the same land, you know. It's the same place. It's 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 completely it's indistinguishable. It's the same people. It's the same language. It's the same. It's, they're just there's no different. The only thing is United Kingdom, Ireland. That's all. <laughs> 